everyone. This video was chosen by the Kiko Pup members in a poll. It's a service dog training game. Basically, you're teaching your dog a default behavior to do when you reach a counter and you do something distracting or you you're messing with something that's distracting. So you might be checking out from a store, um, you might be taking something off of a shelf or putting something onto a shelf uh, when out and about, or you're handling something distracting above the dog's head. Um, so you can choose what behavior you want the dog to do and then play it, train it in training games, in training setups. And I'm gonna show you some examples. So um, you might want your dog to stand calmly at your side, which I prefer, or maybe you want your dog to block you from behind or maybe you want your dog to sit or lay down, or maybe you do want your dog right in front of you. Uh, it's really whatever you want your dog to be doing. There's no right answer. So, I mean, besides jumping up on the counter and licking the person. <laughs> For most service dog public access training, it's a great idea to work on the behaviors inside your house where there's no distractions, so you can build the reinforcement value of the behaviors and the cues, the situational cues, before bringing them out and about. Then the next step is you can take the behaviors into situations like here in this video where I'm working with Halo, who I think is nine months old in this video, and I'm working on the concept of a default behavior in front of a counter. Here I am practicing talking to someone on the other side of this barrier who is off camera. I also have some treats on the counter to simulate a distraction that's on the counter, and I can practice taking my cards out giving them to the person, taking them back, putting things on the counter, taking them off, and also the types of behaviors I might do when I'm talking to someone across, across a counter from me, such as uh, petting my dog and not paying attention to them and doing arm gestures, as well as any sort of distraction you might think of. You can vary how you train this. For example, approaching a wall with no treats on it, placing the treats on the wall, and marking and reinforcing your dog for leaving it. If your dog has a great verbal leave it cue, you can say the cue leave it as you begin the game a couple of times and then stop saying the cue leave it so that the environment starts to cue the behavior so you don't have to say leave it every time you get to a counter. Let's go. Leave it. Ready? If your dog goes for the food that's on the counter, simply use your leave it cue and make an about turn and walk away from the counter and then make it easier for the dog. So use lower level distractions or stand a little bit further away from the counter at first. You can also set the dog up for success by as you reach the counter, marking and reinforcing the dog before they think to go and sniff the counter. Sit. Leave it. Hi, how are you doing? Okay, how much is that? Oh, thank you. Good. Good boy. Once your dog finds it easy to do a basic approach to the counter and leave the treats on the counter, you can start to vary the things that you do. You can use different types of treats of different types of values. You can move around and pretend you're putting things on the counter or actually put things on the counter and practice talking and having a conversation. A lot of service dog trainers might not want to give the dog the treats in the environment. So you might want to always give the dog the treats off your person and not the treats that are the, the distraction. In my own training, I don't end up with any problems from this, but if you did have a service dog that was reluctant to want to go near a counter where there's someone behind the counter, perhaps they don't like the way the cash machine sounds or something like that, this exercise can help the dog want to approach counters. Let's go. That was hard, huh? 
Good boy. Now it's become a default, leave it. Good. You can also work with lower shelves where the distraction is right in front of the dog's face. Say for example, you go to a counter and they have food that's on shelves all the way down to the floor underneath the counter. Or you're reaching for something on the top shelves and your dog's face is right near the lower shelves while you're not looking. Let's go. This way. Good boy. In this part of the footage, there are people that are distracting me and Halo in the environment. And if you can imagine that we were trying to train this behavior from scratch out in public, that uh, I'm not only training the behavior and working on my own distractions, but I'm also working on the distractions in the environment. So one thing you can do is work on stuff at home, but then take your dog out and just work on a settle and mark and reinforce them for looking at the distractions. And then while you're working on the exercise, if the dog notices a distraction and doesn't move towards it, you can mark and reinforce. If your dog is having a problem where you're reaching and taking something off a counter or putting something onto the counter where they jump up, or they touch whatever it is that, uh, that's going onto the counter, I suggest watching my video on counter surfing because it also goes over um, the, teaching the dog a default leave it when you're handling things in the air, starring Gummy Bear the Aussie. So you should check that out. It's in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support my work, don't forget to like this video and leave me a comment as that's highly reinforcing for me. You can also become a supporting member of channel Kikopup and become one of the Kikopup members by clicking the join button. And depending on what country you're in, it's about $5 a month and that gains you access to an extra members video a month that you can find on my YouTube channel under the community section or the member membership section when you're logged in as a member. See you later.